right, we are trying something brand new called Screencast O Matic for your notes today. Okay? So we are going to start here. We started on I guess I can't show a, show an arrow. We started on Wednesday with the planter box problem, and on Wednesday we graphed the planter box problem, and we got zeros at zero comma zero, six comma zero, and nine comma zero, and then we also found the maximum height here to be. At, two at an x value of 2.35 comma 228 so that gave our maximum volume there to be that and then we also had a minimum down here of 7.65 comma negative 68.16 and that was a minimum volume but that didn't work for us because you can't have a negative volume okay the concept the first concept of the day today is going to be something called relative maximums a relative maximum is the highest point in a particular section of graph. So if you think about it in terms of Wausau, Rib Mountain is the relative maximum in the city of Wausau. Okay? It's not an absolute maximum because it's not the tallest point anywhere. That would be K2 in, was it Mongolia or something like that? Mr. Kruger's in the room, too, so if you hear his voice jumping in every once in a while, it's, that's just us doing a screencast, okay? So relative means in a localized area. Absolute means overall. Can't get any higher than that, okay? Likewise, with minimums, okay, a relative minimum is the lowest point in a particular section of graph, okay? My parents in Florida live at an elevation of negative 16 degrees, or not degrees, excuse me, negative 16 feet. So they're 16 feet below sea level at their house in Florida. Okay? Now, is that the lowest point on Earth? No. One of the trenches in the Pacific Ocean is like 20,000 feet below sea level or something along that line. Okay? So that's a relative and a minimum and a absolute the difference there okay all right so we are talking about that over the course of applicable domains okay so a relative minimum or a relative maximum would be a localized high point or a localized low point an absolute would be of the overall function so, today what we want you to do is we want you to find on that planter box problem if a customer ordered a particular planter box with a volume of 100 cubic inches but did not specify a height for the box. Okay, so we're going to use a graphing calculator to determine that. So if you open up your graphing calculators, what you're going to do is you are first going to add a graph. Oops, i got to put my my pointer down you're going to add in a graph and in that graph is going to go your function your function now on the previous page was with h for a variable but on your calculator that's going to be x's so we're going to type in x times open parentheses 12 minus 2x, close parentheses, times, open parentheses, 18 minus 2x. And that was the function that we got on Wednesday. Don't really see it, 
so we're going to move it over. I'm not a big fan of looking at it in this particular way because we know based off of this graph that we saw here that on our x's we're going to have to go up to 228 on our excuse me on our y's we're going to have to go up to 228 and on our x's we should really only go over to 6 so let's put that in on our graph using the menu function we're going to adjust our window window settings so I like to see my y-axis, so I'm going to go negative 2. Then my next one is going to be, I'm going to go all the way up to 10. I like to be on a scale of 1. My y's, I don't need to see negatives, so let's go negative 5 there. You'll see why in a minute. My Y maximum, let's go up to 300. And for that one, let's go by, oh, let's go by 50s. So there is now our graph, our applicable graph. Okay. But really, anything over, oops, now I just made a mistake here, anything over on this side over here, is not usable because of what we learned on Wednesday. Okay? So, the question now that we're asking is when is that volume 100? So, we're going to add in a second function onto this graph. We're going to hit tab. Because tab then opens up, it's stuck, yeah, there we go. We'll hit tab and that opens up a new function box. And in that function box, we're going to hit 100. Now when I graph that, that's going to show me where 100 is. So I can see here now that I've got this intersection point, this intersection point, and that one over here. But again, I'm not worried about that because it's over here in this non-usable type area. So let's use the calculator. Menu. Analyze. Oops, now i got to get rid of all this other stuff because you can still see it. Intersection. And then we have to do this twice now. Menu, Analyze, Intersection. Okay. So there is the first one. There is my second one. Here are my two functions. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back into our notes. I know technology, it's a wonderful thing. So, now we can put all the stuff on here that we want. So, anything, uh, my tool, there's my tool, anything over here is not usable. Okay. So, these two points right here, so this tells me, what do these two intersection points mean? They mean that if we had a height of 0 0.541 inches or 4.76 inches, oops, then we would have a volume equal to 100 cubic inches. Okay. So the question, how many different size planter boxes can plant the seed make to fill this order? They can make two.
All right, so moving on now then to today's lesson, okay? We've studied linear functions. We've studied quadratic functions. That was chapter 1 and chapter 2, okay? And now we will explore more polynomial functions. A common type of polynomial function is called a power function. By the way, for those of you following along, the page number is always going to be up here on these screencasts so that you know where we are as we go along. Okay? So a power function is of the form p of x equals a times x to the n power, where n is a non-negative integer. So n is going to be positive, is what we're talking about there. For the purpose of this lesson, we're only going to focus on power functions where a is 1 or negative 1. Later on in this chapter, next week, well, and actually you saw a little bit of those yesterday where we had funky stuff in here. Like one of them that we had yesterday was um, negative one-half x cubed minus 2x squared plus x plus 3, and you graphed that one. That was number 2 from yesterday. So we're talking about stuff like that where this value here is the a value. And we're going to talk about its positive and negativeness and what it does to the function. Okay? So looking at these, as you can see here, we've got a, a value of 1. Okay? It goes, it's a line. It goes up and to the right, down and to the left. We've got a positive 1 value right there. Okay? Squared, they both go in the same direction. They both go up. There they end up, we have an n value of 2, and again a positive 1 value for a. On all of these, the a value is going to be positive 1. Okay? And then there's x to the 4th, x to the 5th, and x to the 6th. Okay? So, based upon this pattern, okay, with, I'm going to just put dots on here, okay? so this one, we have them going in opposite directions. Then we went to this one, because there's two of them, and our n value is 2. They both go in the same direction. Here we went 3, opposite directions. Here we went 4, same direction. 5, oops, I went one too many there, not 6. 5, we went opposite directions. 6, same direction. So if I look at here now, y equals x to the 7th power, following that pattern, it's going to go through the origin, and they're going to go in opposite directions. Okay? This middle part, which we saw yesterday, this middle part is going to get more funky with more terms. Meaning, if we had plus something, 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 something in here, that middle part, this middle part in, in here, would get your humps and your maximums and your minimums and, and all of that through there, okay, on both odd and even functions. Y equals X to the eighth is going to look like that. They're both going to go in the same directions, okay? So, any observations that we can make based off of what we notice about those? Odd powers, they go in opposite directions. And even powers go in the same. Make a 
general statement about the graph of a power function raised to an odd degree. Well, that's what we just were saying up here. And so we're going to say here that one side goes to positive infinity and the other goes to negative infinity. And the positive infinity just means it goes up, and the negative infinity just means it goes down. And really that's going to depend on your A value. If A is positive, it's on the right side it's going to go up. This is the end behavior that we were talking about yesterday. Okay. General statement about the graph of an even degree I can't really say one's going to positive infinity, one's going to negative infinity because we don't know the A value. So all we can say here is what we've already said is that both sides go to the same direction. Both are either going to go to positive infinity or both are going to go to negative infinity. So, based on our work in question one, sketch the graph of when x to the or of x to the n when n is twelve. Well, that's even, so that's going to go to positive infinity there, and this one's going to go to positive infinity there. Okay? And again, in this middle part, the more terms that we have, that middle part will get more and more funky. Okay? Because this is, this 12 is even, they're going to go in the same direction. Okay. Here, 27 is odd, so they're going to go in opposite directions. Challenging ourselves just a little bit. Okay. If n here, so no matter what number I put in for m, okay, this is just a fancy way of saying that n is even. If I put in m equals 1, then n would be 2. If m is 14, n is 28. If n is 7, oops, excuse me, if m is 7, then n is 14. All of these numbers over here are all even. You're getting out an even number when you put it in 2m plus 1. So this again is going to go up and up. Big fan of arrowheads on the end of my functions. Okay. So now I take all of these and now I add 1 to them so we get 3 and 29 and 15 and all of these numbers over here now are odd. So this is another fancy way of saying that n is odd. So since n is odd, I'm going to go in opposite directions. Okay. Now, we talked about this n behavior yesterday, and unfortunately, this terminology is non-negotiable. Okay? That is what you have to do, or the terminology, what you need to write every time. It needs to be written. 
we're finding right now in Algebra 3 that you're forgetting how to write this. And so we're getting funky stuff in Algebra 3. I shouldn't say we're getting funky stuff because I'm the only Algebra 3 teacher. Okay? In Algebra 3, they're forgetting how to write this. So what we're saying is what the graph is doing. Explain in words the end behavior here. Well, in words, when I say as x goes to infinity, f of x goes to infinity, what that means is as we go to the right, or I shouldn't say as, on the graph, The farther right we go, the bigger our function. Yes. Okay. Conversely, as we go to negative infinity, and f of x is going to negative infinity, so if we switch those around, on the graph, the farther left we go, the smaller our function gets. Okay. And you get that end behavior, one, if you saw the pattern from your degree, the biggest exponent, and two, from just looking flat out at the graph. On this graph, the farther and farther that I go right, the bigger and bigger and bigger my function is getting. So the more I'm going this way, the higher up my function is getting. Likewise, if I go this way, the more I go to the left on my graph, the farther down, the smaller my function is getting. Okay. Your homework for this evening, which you will get here momentarily, is going to be this page. I believe that it is yellow. It is um, 3.2, try it on your own, where we are asking you to Look at the graphs. You can sketch them, a basic sketch. We're not asking for an exact graphing of this particular function. Okay? So you can look at those. Look at what's going on there. You can verify it with a graphing calculator. And then I'm asked, or we're asking for what happens as x gets bigger and bigger in both word notation and in what's called end behavior notation. Okay? So you now have the rest of the time to be working on lesson 3.2. Thanks for listening to our very first screencast.